So the first um, person that we are speaking with, we actually chatted with earlier today because their schedule would not allow us to, um, wouldn't, wouldn't allow him to come live with us. Our first conversations with Michael Tubbs, former mayor of Stockton, California, founder of uh, the Nationwide Coalition Mayors for a Guaranteed Income. He has actually moved into some really exciting new spaces, um, being, in, being a, a, um, a policy advisor to Governor Newsom around direct cash policies. He's also started his own um, uh, new foundation of work to end poverty in California. So we recorded this earlier today. Uh, Michael Tubbs is a brand new dad of a second time over. He's got a two-year-old and he also has a I think like a two week year old. And so I mean, two week old. And so we, um, we managed to find a little bit of time in between um, being dad to be able to have a chat. And I thought it was really important to have his voice here because he's just been leading on so many different efforts. And California is such a um, central kind of um, leading, leading state in the work that we're all doing. So um, we all know, you know, the, the larger basic income community know that you started your work in guaranteed income at that city level um, when you were mayor of Stockton. This year, the findings um, for the first year of SEED came out um, and uh, the, it was really great to hear so much about that. But I would love to hear from your perspective what was most exciting or interesting that came out of that first report. The most interesting or exciting thing that came out of that report for me was just the data to put to rest the notion that giving people financial stability and economic security means they're all of a sudden going to lose all ingenuity, lose all desire, lose, lose the ability to work. And we still hear that even today, but it's great now to point to data. And I think what was powerful for me wasn't that people even stayed the same, but that people were more productive. They were more able to contribute. They were more able to spend time with their families. They were more able to transition from part-time to full-time work. They were more able to have the agency and the power to pick and choose what types of jobs they wanted to do. And that made me incredibly proud because I spent my entire term as mayor arguing with people about this, that, that, that one notion that if you give people money, they're not going to work. Yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully, um... Hopefully we'll be able to uh, get that idea through to Senator Manchin and some of the other people in, the, in Congress right now who are really upset about the child tax credit that's, you know, and, and extending it and that there has to be a work requirement and all these different components that, you know, we know will make it so much more difficult to help families in transition periods, help families do what they know they need to do. And as a parent of two under two, we want to give parents money so they don't have to work. <laughs> like that requires such intense time, focus, and energy that maybe providing parents the economic cushion, particularly in a country that doesn't offer paid time off, which we should for everyone, a country that doesn't have universal kind of paternal leave and maternal leave policies, which we should, we should at least give people a cushion, right? Because it, it, it's parenting is the most important function of democracy. So I'm incredibly proud of the child tax credit. I think that's just a huge first step and for you, the basic income movement, for all the folks on the ground who have been emailing and calling and soon to be marching. I think everyone's just really proud of that. Cause that's a, it's not perfect, but it's a huge yeah. leap forward. If you had told me just last year that we would have a guaranteed income for families with children that would be extended to at least 2025 i was in no way and we're not there yet so that's an inc so i think we should all be not think we're done but really take stock of the work we're doing matters and it's moving the needle that's right yeah use it for fuel for the next step yeah well i i would love to um talk a little bit about this year has been a transition year for you as well and you started to do some work as an advisor to governor newsom on guaranteed income and direct cash policies. What's what's that been like for you? Yeah, well, it's funny. So I was debating whether to go to DC or to stay in California. And I had originally accepted an offer in DC, but the offer would have, it was some policy stuff, but not, I wouldn't be like a decision maker. And I mean, there's like all types of people in DC. Um, so I figured that California being the fifth largest economy, the, the, the largest state in this nation, sort of always pushing the nation forward and so much momentum for mayors who are part of mayors for guaranteed income who are doing 
gigantic compliance already. And the governor, he was so excited when the findings came out. He said, Tubbs, help me figure out how do we do at least something um, to get the ball moving in the state. And then with the work around the Golden State stimulus checks, et cetera. So I'm proud because there's it's the conversation has evolved. There was no resistance. It was OK. How do we do this in a way that the legislators OK with, that the governor's OK with, that that isn't all the way there, but it's a huge step forward. I mean, to have checks given to every Californian making 70K or below, that's huge. The fact that it's OK to give people money. And then also to have money, the first state, to allocate money to support some of the guaranteed income pilots with state dollars, with the goal of having some sort of guaranteed income policy in California, whether it's for pregnant people, whether it's for um, foster youth, which we saw bills, or whether it's for everyone. I just, I, I, I could go on and on, but I'm so proud of California. And we see states like New Mexico and others um, following our lead and saying, okay, we want to do this too. Um, so to have a governor who now, especially after a resounding victory in his recall, who's now looked at, sought after as a national political leader, to have a guaranteed income as one of the things he hangs his hat on and one of the things he could say he led on, I think it's an incredible win for the movement. It gives us that much more momentum to keep moving forward. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's been really exciting to follow um, uh, the community. You know, we've obviously been following very closely, but it's also been great to see the impact of really a kind of the ripple effect of those kinds of decisions and that kind of leadership and to see so many large scale um, different guaranteed income pilots being proposed in California. And it really does feel like it's going to be um, really on the, uh, the leading forefront of that large set of data that's being collected to be able to answer, you know, all the questions statewide or federal legislation. So really excited for sure. And LA, um, the LA March is actually a rally this year. Um, and um, the comp, some people, some of the um, leadership in the Compton Pledge will be there to be able to talk about their work and, um, and many others. So really excited to, to see what's happening in the larger LA area as well. So, well, I mean, LA is really ground zero for, for the yeah. guaranteed income movement in this country. You have the amazing work of the Compton Pledge. You have the amazing work of Mayor um, Garcia with his guaranteed income pilot. You have sort of Mayor Garcetti, who's one of the founding mayors of MGI on our advisory board, Mayor's for Guaranteed Income Advisory Board, with a $40 million pilot. You have Supervisor Holly Mitchell in LA County with a $45 million pilot. This is all government money. Like LA's not messing around with, with yeah. this. Yeah, <laughs> Council Member Curran Price who before he knew Mayor Garcetti was talking about guaranteed income was also reaching out to talk about guaranteed income for, for South LA. It's just an incredible, incredible um, momentum in LA. And it's and it's weird because it's so controversial. When I was talking about 150 people with philanthropic yeah. dollars, there's no controversy about it here. Everyone's excited. The controversy is how do we get to more people, right? And I think that's just such a big win again for the movement and the work we've done collectively to socialize this concept and make it a given, a, a duh. Uh, uh, we made it a, where's mine? <laughs> like, I, I want this too. This will help me and my family as well. That's right. Yeah, it is exciting too, just because, because of, like you mentioned a few minutes ago, California's, the size of California's economy, you actually do, and like the size of the LA County's budget, you actually have the kind of funds that in a lot of other states or even a lot of other cities might not be able to do such grand scale um, pilot demonstrations just because their budgets are smaller and it becomes you know a harder a harder um, harder piece to be able to push forward but so yeah I think it's just really cool to see that um, that the the counties the states that have the money are starting to think about like this is this is the direction to go which actually leads me into your most latest endeavor. Um, you're focused on a multi-year effort to eliminate poverty in California. So what's what's your vision for that? What are you what are you kind of working on as you're getting this up and off the ground? Yeah, so a big part of why I decided to stay in California and work with Governor Newsom is he has a we have a shared vision around poverty being just such a drain on our state. And that's why guaranteed income is so important. So in that position, really building out a team and an initiative and a focus on how do we build public will 
to end poverty in California? How do we align sort of policymakers, entertainment, arts, culture around this goal? And then how do we do it? <laughs> and I think especially because California, for all that's great about California, we also have the highest poverty rate in this nation. It's also incredibly unaffordable to live in California for the vast majority of folks. And that for me is, 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 is I, I don't like to be, I don't want people to say we're hypocrites. I don't want people to say we're progressive or forward thinking in name only. And if we're going to be a golden state, it has to be a golden state for everyone. So it's really just putting a focus on the issue, elevating the issue, making so that everyone who's running for Senate, who's running for assembly, who's running for anything in California has to answer, what are you going to do to eliminate poverty in the, in the state? Because we can do it. We have the resources, we have the expertise, we have a Democratic governor, a Democratic state Senate and a Democratic assembly. Like if we can't do it in California, then it can't be done. And I just refuse to believe that. So um, more to come um, first quarter next year, but we're, we're building it and really excited. And a lot of it is grounded in sort of what we saw with the work of SEED and, and marriage for guaranteed income that someone just has to move first. Someone just has to do it. Someone just has to be audacious to saying we can do it. And then the energy follows and then and people follow. And I think it's also what you guys have done with the income movement is that you just have to create a tent, create a coalition, and then people will come because people are looking for ways to channel their energy. People see what we see. They see the lack, they see the depravity, they see, and, I, and the last thing I'll say, this is maybe probably overly philosophical, but I think that's partly why there's such a, intense anger and backlash against homelessness. I think because deep down, everyone knows that it makes no sense for me to be housed in shelter and to have another human being who I have to walk by to get to my house, not be sheltered. I think it does something to everyone. Some people lash out and become angry at the folks who are homeless. And some people like me get lashed out and get angry at the structures and say, okay, how do we change this so that everyone has, everyone's treated with the dignity that they deserve. That's right. I've I've had conversations with friends and colleagues that live in California, and um, over the last you know one or two election cycles, when different ballot measures and things have been up, just fe uh, feeling really disappointed in so many people who call themselves progressive or call themselves liberal, but aren't passing the kinds of efforts and putting their kind of their heart behind the kinds of things and their money behind the things that are actually going to address things like the the, um, the homeless. Uh, community, you know, trying to get housing to be more stabilized, you know, all these different components. And um, so I just love that that's, you're really targeting and tackling some of that narrative shift and some of that, the real, the real work that has to happen for people to be able to take that one more step forward towards, I'm going to, I'm going to walk the talk, you know. Yeah, I, the goal is to get people to stop hating poor people and hate poverty. <laughs> that's the goal. Like, how do we, we don't hate poor people, we hate poverty. And how do you organize around that? Yeah, yeah. Well, we're coming up on, we got another couple minutes, but I would love to understand what, you, you started to talk a little bit about um, Q1 2022, what you're looking at. What What is it that people that are part of the larger movement can do to help support the work that you're doing or what's what's your primary focus and, and how yeah. how is that gonna? I think there's really like three or four things. First, the work that everyone's doing is so important. And the most important thing we can do is, is continue to push to make that child tax credit permanent, um, particularly before these midterms. <laughs> like we have a window before November 2022 to really push and give our um, elected officials some, some courage to do what's necessary. Um, number two, I love the work you all have been doing and calling. I get tagged all the time around mayors you guys are calling and reaching out to. Please continue to do so um, because I'm not I'm not their constituent. So I could call and email and text, but if they don't hear from their folks like Tubbs, maybe my community is not ready, even though the data tells us that the vast majority of Americans support a guaranteed income. Then number three, I have a book coming out on November 17th, November 16th, actually called The Deeper the Roots. And it's about... I mean, basic income is definitely a part. It's about Stockton. It's about governing. It's about winning. It's about losing. It's about family. It's about faith. It's about everything. I mean, it's not that it's only been around for 31 years, so it's like a 700 page <laughs> but, but I, I, it, it's something, it, it, it tells a story, but I think it tells a story of not just me, but different individuals who saw something that they did not like 
and didn't have the answers, didn't have a name before, no one cared who they were, like, but just did it. And from that came energy. And I think for so many people involved in, in this work, it's important to realize that the people you look up to, the Stacys, the Mary Tubbses, the, the, the whoever that person is, the Andrew Yangs, et cetera, you know their names because they did something. <laughs> but before they did something, you didn't know them. And the same, so you have to just do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so those are the ways that, that folks can help. Awesome, yes, action. <laughs> In whatever capacity we can do it, you know. Everybody have to. Just, yeah, that's right, that's right. Well, this has just been a lovely conversation. Thank you so much. I know fatherhood and um, you're, you're taking the time to be with family right now. I'm really thankful that you uh, were able to take a little time and spend some time with us today. Um, so have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your uh, paternity leave and um, we'll see you, see you soon when we'll be checking out your book for sure. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, take care.